Hello everybody and welcome to the Alien vs Predator Galaxy YouTube channel. I'm Aaron Percival aka Corporal Hicks. And I am Adam Ziller aka Ridgetop. And this is another Motion Tracker video series talking about some new Aliens Fireteam content. It's a good month. It's a good month for Fireteam yeah. teasers. <laughs> yeah. And we're digging it. After the drought of info on this game, we have a flood of it. So, And this is the end of week three, I guess, in terms of it's IGN's. It's just the whole month of March. Yeah, IGN's getting the, the coverage of this game. So this week we've had a hour-long interview with um, Cold Iron's co-founders, Craig and Matt, um, which we haven't posted on the website, um, but I think that was mostly because there wasn't anything really new in terms of um, the, the details of... It was still a pretty interesting interview. Have you listened to it yet or no? I've got about... I got halfway through it yeah. because I've been so busy. They haven't, work, I think yeah, the place. second half is really talk more about the alien stuff, but it is interesting. It's worth listening to. Yeah, from what I remember hearing, you know, there was there was stuff about the studio's history and working in COVID, um, yeah. and the changing the hands half. too. They go through that in the second half. So, any any specific details that you want to shout out about that one? Um, it was kind of amusing to see um, one of the devs praise Alien Isolation in front of Ryan McCaffrey. <laughs> I very much enjoyed that, and I'm sure you will too. Did he um, Did he give any reactions to that one? Not that I could see. No, it was pretty stoic. But <laughs> that's it was, a shame. It was fun. That's a shame. But funny. Anyway, I didn't think he was going to go. I actually played that game and it sucked, even though it got like higher review scores than every other outlet in one game of the year for PC Gamer. But, but that's another story for a different day. Every, every, every video so far has been mentioned. Every video. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so the the second thing that's come out of our gym for this week for Fire Team is a look at some of the weapons from the game. So they've showed off some of the alien types. We've seen we've seen a good few of these weapons already in like the loadout video that they've done uh, last week. Um, so some of these will be, you know, we we have seen, but like with the alien stuff, they did a little bit of law drops that were quite fun. So this is the game's iteration of the pulse rifle. So this is the uh, M41A2, I do believe. This time we see it without the muzzle attachment that we oh. saw in the other video. Oh my god! You know now something's been pointed out to me um, about the muzzle attachment. I can't not notice it now. So I don't know if it's gonna. What? So you've got, you've got two barrels here. We've got the top one with the vents, which is the actual barrel and then you've got this um one here that would traditionally be for um the underslung whatever it is the grenade or the the shotgun if we're going on colonial marines as customizations the muzzle break on on that we saw on the last one was on the bottom barrel oh it was on the uh yeah the under barrel yeah so uh, huh. li little mistake there well i don't know maybe the top barrel well what else would the top barrel be for if not the main fire barrel it wouldn't no, uh, unless it was supposed to be the, the gas. Because chamber. I thought they were going to do, but, like, the grenade stuff wasn't going to be built in now. It would be, like, under slung attachments. Well, you mean dro dropping it on the bottom of the rail? I, yeah. I don't think I don't think it will be. I think this is some sort of disguised under slung thing. Huh. Well, uh, game's yeah, an alpha. <laughs> ho hopefully that one gets talked about and they pick up on the, the muzzle break. So another interesting thing of note on the barrel here, you can see the little Colonial Marines logo, but next to it, instead of USCM, it says UACM. And we also noticed that uh, Cold Iron did a post about that on the official Aliens Fire Team Twitter, and, and it just said UAMC, I believe. And some people were like, well, wait, it's the USCM. It's the United States Colonial Marines. But when I see UA, I recognize uh, United Americas from the Alien RPG. Um, so I'm wondering if this means like the military political structure has shifted at this point in the game, because the game is a bit ahead of Alien 3. Um, but for our viewers who may be unfamiliar with the RPG, Aaron, did you want to give us a little idea of the uh, United Americas? Yeah, sure. So uh, this is just a, I mean, the, there's a whole chapter on it and stuff, but this is just like the high level overview that they give, which is the United Americas created in the early 2100s to compete with the expanding three world empire. 
the United Americas was formed by the merger of North, Central and South America into one nation. The United Americas is a major colonizing and spacefaring power, constantly expanding the frontier. They operate both the colonial marines and the colonial navy, the most powerful peacekeeping forces on the frontier. So the RPG set, what, 10 years after Alien 3? Something like that. And then this game's 30 years? Something like that, yeah. 30 years after Alien 3. So I'm guessing something cracked off there. Or is it just a gaff? Probably not. We'll see. But then again, with, with the barrel thing, maybe. <laughs> so um, this is something that I've saw talked about in um, on our boards actually, and I hadn't quite, I hadn't picked up on this before. So the pulse rifle fires caseless ammunition. This right here is an ejection port. Oh, that's special. on the that's on the uh, airsoft yeah. one too. No, I said the same thing because obviously in real life it, the pulse rifle is based on the Thompson, and the Thompson fires fires um, you know cased ammunition and has shells to eject. On that, it's here near the bolt um, the bolt handle. So they they've purposefully designed and moved. An ejection port from where it was on the actual prop. Wait a minute. There's two ejection ports though. The one on the bottom might be for the the grenades. No, it could be for. Um, actually, yeah, that's a fair point. Because they line up but, with the barrels. But then you had. Um, but it, yeah, you did, you know you did have the cock area up there with the uh, on the top in the original one, right? Yeah. So I'm saying it was a realistic thing. It was a real. But that wasn't meant to be an ejector in the movie. Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. I can't remember if you physically see them ejecting shells. You must see them ejecting shells from the blanks. Okay, you know what? That's a good thought, though, in terms of it being... But Well, no, because it's based, based, placed above the, um, the above the magwell there. That's true, but, I mean, maybe the ammo goes around the other side of it. I don't know. But then... We'll find out. It was, <laughs> if it you was... fire a grenade and the shell comes out of there, then we'll have our answer, but... Um, but then in in the film, it was loaded from the bottom. That's true, like because it was based shotgun. on a Spaz shotgun, yeah. but this is different. Hmm. Call Dyne if you're watching. Let us know. <laughs> Let us know what's, <laughs> what's happening. Um, I, do, I do really like the... Um, or just disregard us and your picky fans. You know, most people won't notice that. Uh, I do really like the... the, the the site here that is cool yeah it feels it feels very um very aesthetically correct to the to the design and again i st i still like the um i st i still like the facelift i like these plates yeah the plate kind of look to no, it's it a, it's a cool looking pulse and, and even sure. even the stock um this is modernized but it's still sliding like it was on on the uh, the original uh, rather than vent um them rather than being like a, a skeleton one but mm -hmm. it's, it's still but then again you do also have a catch there for um for folding it anyway that's the pulse rifle and its law from this is the m 41 a 2 pulse rifle so notorious is the weapon's volume of fully automatic fire marines joke that the true sign of an expert is the ability to pull the trigger and fire just one bullet as with most marine firearms, caseless ammunition makes the M41 suitable for use during EVA and in microgravity environments. There is no risk of ejected hot brass floating into nearby allies. See, I would have thought something with a, re a, a, a recoil dampening thing would be better for zero gravity there. But yeah. uh, that, that's, a, that's, that's a fun Because bit. it does kick as they, at mm -hmm. least the one in Aliens did, so... But I don't, I don't know where that fluff comes from. But that that one made me. I'm not sure how accurate that one kind of is. I don't know, unless you have an EVA suit that has jets on it to compensate, maybe. Maybe. But um, we've seen this one as well, which is the D DT57 Medved, which is the fancy looking Hyperdyne shotgun that was in the last video. I do, I love the looks of this thing. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. This is this is gorgeous. And again, with the Hyperdyne, you know, uh, Bishop's manufacturer. Although apparently it was designed 
in the Union of Progressive Peoples. So I'm not sure how that works with Hyperdyne. By a company. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Bishop, you know, Bishop's manufacturer for the company coming from the, the UPP. I'm not sure that one Sold works. abroad under license. Hmm. Unless, unless Hyperdyne's licensed it out and just stuck hmm. their trades on it. Uh, but I can't remember what he said in the last video about this. Now, this is the only oh, one I don't, oh, I think I I don't get, like. I think I get it. Go up to the shotgun again. So... It was designed by UPP, but it's licensed out to Hyperdyne, I think, is what it's saying. And Hyperdyne is the one that sells it outside of the UPP. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, that might make, it, might make sense. This is the only one I actually don't like. The Type 78 Burst Pistol. Initially designed for service with three World Empire military police forces, the Type 78 has better accuracy and longer effective range than most machine pistols. Its compact Wayland yutani trademarked bevel pup TM, design makes it exceptionally handy, but allows only average magazine capacity. Yeah, I'm not keen on this one. Too uh, putri looking for you? Too Star yeah, Trek looking? Yeah. It's kind of cool. I mean... Just because it's white with blue lights, I mean, if it was green, like we wouldn't, we wouldn't <laughs> bit have of, the same bit, thoughts, bit of olive, olive, and you wouldn't care. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I just, this... I think Eric Xenomorphin compared it to um, Mass Effect. Mm, I don't think it looks quite that futury. I still, it, it still works for me. Like it still has that alien aesthetic. Like the metal looks rugged. Like, even though, it, yes, it is more of an advanced weapon than we're used to seeing, like, this is in the future compared to Alien 3, so. Okay, so Adam, Adam likes this one, I do not. And you'll be able to change the color, too. Like, we've yeah, shown the in the last video there were skins, so if you want to make here, it all, you probably can. Here we have an updated version of the smart gun. So it says it's an L56A3. I'm pretty sure it's an M56 is the original. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a, a, a little gaff or not, but um, it's the updated version of the Pulse Rifle. You mean Wayland. Smart Gun? Smart Gun, yes. Which... I mean, there's not too much to say on that one, I don't think. Yeah, it looks cool. Looks like a Smart Gun. Um, and there's not much said on the fluff here either. A late model variant of the popular squad support weapon that uses meta materials to reduce the mass and bulk of the support harness. I think that I think the 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 motorcycle grips angled a bit further down on that one. So here's here's an updated version yeah, of the this, legacy gun. This is the one I was wondering about. Was the this game's sniper rifle? Well, one of them. I think they've got a couple. Oh, you've got your UACM there on the Magwell. Interesting that it's bolt action. I mean, the ones we saw in AVP 2010 and AVP 2, like the one in AVP 2010 was semi-auto, and then the one in AVP 2 had that, like... Um, it was a railgun. Yeah, it was kind of like partially a railgun. I know it had like a gas canister or something that would spin, which is really cool. Um, but I don't know if we've seen a bolt action sniper rifle in the Alien universe before. I can't remember one, at least from any of the games. But th this is actually supposed to be an updated version of the the scope rifle from the tech manual I talked about in, I think, in the last video. And it, it looks nothing like the scope rifle, even as an updated thing, because that was a that was a ballpup design, and was, I think it was a bit more. Was it the WA two thousand that reminded me of? Yeah, and I, I got Wolf the WA two thousand vibes from the old. Um, from the old uh, scope rifle and this is supposed to be like a newer generation of it, an a3 version of it i mean i like it don't get me wrong it's yeah, following it's cool that looking. it's following that plated sort of aesthetic that the pulse rival a2 is going for so aesthetically i like it i do like it i'm, I'm just i think it should have been its own thing i don't think there's enough design lineage there with the um, with the scope rifle 
And I'd still like to see legacy guns in it as well. I'd still like to see the original pulse rifle with its original sound effects and the original smart gun as well. I'm hoping they're hidden away in there somewhere. And if there's an original iteration of the scope rifle in there as well, that'd be nice. Uh, one of the finest sniper weapons in existence, the A3 is a specialised variant of the M42 with an extended barrel, advanced optics and stabilisation features that permit engagement at a greater range. And last, but by no means least, this one's really cool. Yeah. OCAP 19 Vulcan. What do you think of that one, Adam? Pretty sweet looking. I, I dig the, the dual barrel flamethrower design. Um, because, I mean, flamethrowers have just been really effective in the Alien universe, right? So to see one that's kind of carried like that um, is just a bit more powerful looking of a flamethrower. Yeah, I'm, I'm into that. It's got a QR code on it. Oh, maybe I'll try to scan it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying now. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get it to focus. Ah. Shame. Um, we'll have to play with that, see if we can actually get it to open something. But no, I like that call. This, I spoke about this one, I think, in the first video. I get sound cannon vibes from Rogue in this, from this design. It reminds me of the sound cannon from that quite a lot, and I like that. I do wonder if perhaps we might get, because the, the Kramer is from one of the assault rifles, as we talked about in the in the the loadout sort of video last time is is from it's from rogue and this thing looks like it's uh, d inspired by something from rogue so i do wonder if we'll see a sound cannon especially with them showing up recently again not quite as they were in rogue but the concept of a sound weapon uh, showed up again in into charybdis so i'd be curious to see if we get any sort of specialized weapons like that with uh with fire team and this one's hyperdyne as well apparently hyperdyne like licensing stuff uh, make some. <laughs> there's a there's an airsoft company that does that. Was it Umarex? They uh, they just get the rights to uh, licenses and slap their name on names on rifles on replicas over here. And Cyber uh, Hyperdyne is the Umarex of um, fire teams, <laughs> weapons manufacturers. Um, but yeah, that's that's it with the weapons. Is any any thoughts on that one, Adam? I mean, In they general? all they all look cool to me. Um... In the last video we did um, on Fire Team, the the different classes, um, I I went over and I looked through some of the weapons again, and there's a number of weapons like a, a longer form uh, pulse rifle as well that that we didn't really see detailed. So I'm just kind of curious, like how many weapons are actually going to be in this game? Like how deep is this going to be? Is this going to be like uh, like a Call of Duty thing where you can really customize these weapons and kind of craft your own variants, or is this just going to have like a set list of weapons that you can do some attachments for, but it'll it'll be a pretty good list of weapons. So. It, can, it kind of makes me wonder if perhaps it's going to be the heavy variant of the Pulse Rifle. It's from, it's in the Thriller, not Thriller, The Hunt, the hunt Begins uh, miniatures game. They have like a heavy duty um lmg style pulse rifle so i wonder if that's what you saw mm. be curious yeah I'm, I'm very excited to see the rest of the weaponry that comes out of this i do like the the updated 30 years on take that we've seen from a lot of the aesthetic i do still hope the legacy is in there like i said earlier i really do i know a lot of people would like to hear that original sound effect and and rock that original pulse rifle so just especially with how deep they seem to want to go with the level of customization i can't imagine them not doing it so we'll see how about everybody else out there how, how do you like the new weapons and um uh, again you know is is there anything in particular you'd like to see in there well thank you everybody for watching this has been corporal hicks and ridgetop signing off <laughs>